guys, it's Shout of the Rat, and for today's baby rat training video, instead of training a trick, I'm instead going to be working on some things that you should ideally teach any rat. Uh, even if you don't want to train your rats, these are good things to teach them because it will help you with just how you interact with them and also help you with medical issues later on. So the five things I want to go over today are, first of all, teaching your rats to accept liquid treats nicely, uh, and you can use a spoon to do that, so I call this the spoon method. And then I'm also going to be syringe training them with some syringes. Then I will also be talking about some treats you want to introduce so you can use them later on when they're ill. Uh, and then finally, I'll also be talking about weighing your rats and just doing a quick health check uh, so you can just, you know, look them over and see if anything is externally wrong. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. And the first thing I want to talk about is how you can teach your rats to lick off liquid treats like this little nugget is doing right here. So little Olive here is going to show us exactly what I'm talking about when I say the spoon method. So basically you want a spoon and you wanna put some liquid treat on it like this. And the reason you do this is because, well, if your rat nips a spoon, it's not going to feel great. Uh, it's not going to hurt them. It's not going to hurt the spoon, but it won't feel great. And so instead they are going to try licking the liquid treat off it. And when that goes really well for them, they're going to repeat the behavior. And this teaches them to lick the liquid treat instead of nipping it. So if you do this a few times and you just present them with the spoon with some liquid treat on it a few times, then they will learn how to take it from you. And then after that, you can just go ahead and switch to your hand and they will know how to take liquid treats nicely. The second thing I wanna talk about is syringe training your rats. So here I have a bag of syringes. I just got this online. And these are one milliliter syringes, which are the kind that you will see used uh, by your vet when they give you medicine for the rats because rats are very small and they only need a very small amount of medicine. So I will be showing you how you can teach your rats to drink from these uh, because if you don't teach them to drink from them when they are healthy, then when they get ill and they don't feel great and they aren't really food motivated, they won't wanna drink from a syringe. And oftentimes you'll find people have issues with getting their rats to drink from a syringe when ill. So to combat this, you can just teach them to drink from the syringe early on. So the easiest way to do that is you just want something that they like. Oh my gosh, she's gonna steal my syringe. So here I have some Ensure, or actually I think it's the kids version, PD Ensure. Uh, but it's a really good drink to give your rats when they're sick. It's a good drink to hide medicine because it's a pretty strong taste. And rats typically really like it. So this is her first time trying the vanilla Pediasure. Uh, usually I use the strawberry one. But I thought that maybe giving her a different flavor would uh, kind of give you a more realistic expectation for the first time they try something. Although I will say these girls are very adventurous about food. Some rats you need to offer them new foods several times, like a dozen times before they'll actually try it. Uh, because some of them have this instinct that wild rats have where since they can't vomit, they will be very suspicious of new foods the first few times they try them and they'll just try a little bit and then wait hours in between to try again uh, because they wanna make sure that it doesn't hurt them. Uh, but anyways, so first I will give the rats some of this Pediasure in just a little cup so they can try some. And this is just to make sure that they know that it's something that they really like and trust. And then after this, I'm going to go ahead and put some in the syringe. Okay, so here is my syringe, and I'm going to just go ahead and suck up some of this. You can see, just suck that up. And I have a little bit here. And here I'm going to just slowly depress it as they're licking it. So you can see they took to it really quickly. Some rats will be a little bit confused at first and back off. Uh, in that case, I suggest putting a finger here and then just depressing a little bit of the uh, whatever's inside the syringe onto your finger so that they can drink it. And then I suggest slowly continuing to do this and then gradually moving your finger away so that they're actually drinking from the spout of the syringe itself. Oh my God, Bean. Beanzy, what are you doing when you crazy little Bean? Bean, you already know how to do this. Means like, but anything for a little bit of extra deliciousness. That's right. Okay, can, can you just, can you just, no, can you just, no, thank you. Yeah, so anyways, you want to repeat this several times. Uh, I suggest you repeat it at least once a week for the first few weeks. After that, you don't really need to repeat it. Uh, you can do it once in a while. You can use it to give training treats and things like that. But you don't really need to repeat it after that as long as they have gotten the idea. So yeah, syringe training is just very useful uh, because later on, if you want to give your rats something to hydrate them or you just want to syringe feed them some food, uh, let's say they are really weak and they're having trouble lapping it up, sometimes you can just very slowly syringe food easier. Uh, it takes less energy for them to eat it. 
Uh, but basically, overall, it's just a really great thing to do. Uh, you can give medicine this way. It's just a very useful thing to do when your rats are healthy because, well, later on if they get sick, you want them to associate the syringe with good things. Okay, so that's syringe training. And the next thing I want to talk about is just giving your rats a few different liquid treats uh, and getting them used to taking them before they get ill. So this is kind of along the same lines of syringe training. But basically, if you want your rats to be easy to medicate, the easiest thing to do is to just prepare them for it when they're healthy. And one way to do that is syringe training, but the other way to do that is to introduce them to a lot of strong tasting and very tasty liquid treats like this Pediasure or Insure, uh, which are really good for hydrating sick rats. They're good things to keep them going when they don't want to eat anything else. And they're great for hiding medicines. And the thing is you want to introduce these when the rats are healthy because that way they already have a good association with it and they won't be suspicious of it. So it's just a good idea all around to give them foods like this uh, when they're healthy so that they trust them. And it also means that if you need to put medicine in the food and it tastes kind of weird, they'll be more likely to eat it because they already trust the food. So yeah, I recommend giving some things like Ensure, uh, yogurt. Yogurt can't be used with all antibiotics, but it's still a good thing to have because you can use it for other medications. Uh, another good one is meat baby food. So here I have chicken, I think. And chicken is one of my rat's favorite flavors. I get this Gerber meat baby food, and I find they like this more than like the soupy version of the uh, other brands that I usually see. But yeah, you can offer them baby foods, you can offer them yogurt, you can offer them Ensure, you can offer them uh, I also like to use soy infant formula for sick rats, so I will kind of give my rats that when they're healthy, some of it, so they get used to it. So just all sorts of stuff, and just make sure that they have a few different things that are great for sick rats, uh, and that they learn to trust them when they are healthy. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is weighing your rats. So one thing that's really important to have when you have rats is a kitchen scale. You want to be able to weigh them in grams because rats are so small that you need to weigh them in grams in order to be able to see those minute weight changes. And you'll also need grams for whatever medicine calculations you need to do. I mean, if you're doing them yourself, uh, so it's just a good idea to be able to weigh them in grams. Now, the thing with scales is there are a few different ways to weigh rats on them. And by that, I mean rats are wiggle worms. So if you want them to stay still on the scale, it's not going to be easy. So the obvious way is to just put your rat on there and hopefully they stay still. Uh, maybe you give them a treat to lick while they're on there, which might give you a little bit less accurate of a reading. Uh, but in this case, I think it's pretty accurate. But what if your rat is shy or they're suspicious of the scale or so forth? What do you do then? Well, as our two gracious uh, rattos who are in the carrier for some reason. Oh my gosh, guys, get out of the carrier. Don't squeak at me, donut. Well, what you can do instead is you can actually put a carrier on your scale, then zero it out, and then take one of your little rattos. Oh my god, I think it's a different one. Okay, here we go. Here's Olive again. Put them in the carrier. You have the weight right there, and you don't need to worry about them getting away from the scale. And finally, another option, if you don't have a carrier that fits on your scale, is just to use a box. Uh, I would not recommend using one that looks like this because this box is uh, pretty crappy looking at this point. But instead, you can use a enclosed box uh, or just any sort of thing that fits on there. You could use a bowl and you need to again zero it out and put your ratto in the box. Again, if you use a box for this, I would recommend using something with a top uh, because that way your rat is less likely to want to just hop out. Um, I did not use one as a top because I kind of forgot to bring a box with me, so I'm just using this old tissue box. But you could just put your rattle in there, and it works pretty well, keeping them in there while they weigh. And you're such a big girl now! She's like twice the weight when I got her! But yeah, having a scale is very useful and having those different methods of weighing your rats is very useful. Uh, I recommend getting a weight for your rat at least once a week. I do once a week for my healthy rats and if they are frail and old or if they have some health issues going on or if I'm just worried about their weight, then I will weigh them once a day or even twice a day. But usually I do it once a week uh, with healthy rats. So again, it's just a good idea to track their weight and write it down so that if they get ill, then you can notice quicker. Um, sometimes you won't notice their weight changes because they're just such small animals. And on top of that, you can show it to your vet and they will be able to kind of contrast that with the weight that they get um, on the day you bring them in. So it's just really helpful in terms of their overall health to know their weight. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is just doing a health checkup. So for a health checkup, you just want to be able to hold your rat. You want to look at different aspects of their body. So first of all, you want to make sure that they're active and bright-eyed, which uh, little Olive here is very much so. 
And then on top of that, you also want to make sure that everything else is in order. You want to look at their feet, their tail. You want to look all over their skin, see if they have any bumps. Uh, they shouldn't have any lumps or bumps. They shouldn't have any scabs or scratches. Uh, the occasional scab or scratch is completely normal. Uh, sometimes you will see, you know, if they scratch themselves a tiny bit of blood, which is not a bad thing. I mean, once in a while, they will just nick each other while playing. But you don't want to see an excessive amount of scratches. You shouldn't see anything super deep. Or you shouldn't see any bite marks. So overall, you're just looking for your rat to have a smooth coat. Or if they're a Rex coat like her, she's a kind of like a poor Rex coat. Uh, then it'll be a little wavy. Just normal for whatever your rat's coat type is. You want to check their teeth. You can't really see right now, but... Uh, <laughs> It's really hard to do this for the camera, but you want to check their incisors. You can see there. I promise you I'm not hurting her. She just was not happy being held still. Uh, but you can check their teeth like that. You just flip them over. You just look in between their uh, two little lips right there. And, and they might squeak at you like little Olive did here. She's like, why would you do that to me? It's okay. I got some yogurt. Now she's happy again. But yeah, check everything is clear. You want to make sure there's no excessive discharge. Oh, well, there really shouldn't be any discharge from the nose. Um, if there's porphyrin, you don't want there to be too much of it. And porphyrin is the red substance, uh, kind of mucus-like substance rats have. And they secrete it from a gland behind their eye, and it drains out their eyes and nose. Uh, usually you won't see it, because usually in healthy rats, they will groom it off when they wake up. But sometimes as rats get older, they will not groom as much, or they will secrete more porphyrin. So you'll see a little bit of it. Uh, some rats are more prone to it than others. Others, but you'll also sometimes see it if they get sick or stressed which is why you want to make sure they don't have an excess amount and they aren't showing any other symptoms and then on top of that you want to look at their behavior if they're active uh, you want to make sure that they're still running around and doing their normal stuff it's normal for older rats to slow down some and it's normal for rats to have different temperaments but you want to make sure that their behavior is normal for them and you don't want to see any drastic changes in behavior because that can definitely be a sign of illness so yeah, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about here. Uh, hopefully this will help anyone out there who is just, you know, new to rats or even if you've had rats for a while, sometimes uh, some of these things will go under the radar. I know I didn't start syringe training my rats until like my second pair of rats, I want to say. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope to see you next time. Bye!